Hello everybody and welcome once again to All of Fabric 3. Today we are going to have a look at a mod called TIS 3D or TIS 3D. Um, so let's get started. So here as you can see are all the items in the in the mod. Some of these are creative only like for example the skeleton key uh, and some of these like the prism is only used within a certain components but the rest of them we got audio modules bundled redstone but i suppose the important ones would be start with would be a controller which is made out of one diamond of four redstone and four iron and casings which are actually quite expensive oh well, no they make eight so a, a block of iron but that's the reason why i've already got some made up so let's go and have a look at actually setting up something to start with because it probably take a while to do this so i've got a little area prepared over here and what I'm going to do is I'm first of all going to put down the controller module, uh, which is this one. I won't go through all the recipes because they're in they're in the system, so to speak. So now what you can also do is it says you can actually put a book. It says here, to make the reference manual, you use a, um, a book on the controller block. So let's just do that. I think you shift right click it, shift right click it, right click it. It's right click it and you get this reference guide and that should tell us a little bit about it great it does i haven't obviously I haven't seen this before in fact i hadn't actually figured out how to do it until i just opened it up today anyway so what you do do with this if i've got it in a sensible place which i haven't let's just move it back where i intended it to be oops too far, a bit aggressive it? Um, let's put the controller over here here now you give it the, the controller a redstone signal and the level and the level of the redstone signal represents the speed that the um controller is going to run at and of course for debugging purposes we don't want it to be running particularly fast let's just fill it out the hole again um so i've got it set to a reasonably low signal let's have a look what power that's that one probably two i think you need two it might work with one but uh, it doesn't tick over maybe you have to click it over to tick over so beside this you always put some controller block casings like this not like that <laughs> definitely not like that doesn't help dirt box dirt don't help so i'm going to put down a couple of casings on here and then i'm going to put a redstone module on this one here like let's get the redstone module out they look like this you saw the actual if you have a look at this it's just a comparator i think uh, no, it's a repeater in this case to make two redstone modules with three glass panes. Nearly all of these have got three glass panes, two iron and one redstone at the bottom. So you could put a redstone module on here like this. Well, I should think, just right click it on and then you get this signal here. Now because this is running, not running actually, let's turn it on, run it. Uh, we can then possibly turn this on, yes indeed we can. So now you can see that this has actually got a redstone signal and and that indicates that the signal is power of seven. Um, and then we could actually put another casing on top of this. You use quite a lot of casings in these, in these designs, but for, the, for a bit of demonstration purposes, I'm going to put on top of this one here, a display module. There's one that displays two digits. Um, that's the display module. And the one that displays two digits is, uh, I can't see it for the time being. Let's have a look over here because it's actually the it's in fact it's the use of this one if you do no oh, that's yeah if you do the use of the display module you can make a two digit display module it's sort of a grayed out one and you can also make a terminal so a two digital two digit one is i don't are oh, there actually you should have two of these i'm not sure the other one's gone so we put that on here like that and then you'll see it's it's changed over to seven it wasn't instant and it was the reason it wasn't instant is because this hasn't got a very fast redstone signal but what you can do to speed this up is to put multiple um multiple redstone signals on it so for example multiple levers so you could put it like that and so you could have one two three maybe up to five because you're obviously going to need the six face connector controller so you can put multiple red signals on this and it'll speed it up in fact as you notice it may the block itself acts as a, as a normal block with redstone which you probably don't want to do so now let's program this and what i'm going to do in fact i'm going to put down another casing on top of this one here as well like that 
we'll, we'll use that later on. As I'm going to take this redstone signal here and I'm going to detect when a um, this redstone signal goes, for example, from zero to one or one to zero, in other words, a rising or falling edge. So we need to program it. And what, the way you program it is using a book and quill. And it has a sort of a, it's a, a language. And the language is sort of like assembler. It's actually not really assembler. So what I'm going to do, uh, first of all, is I'm going to put on here another redstone module. And the reason I'm going to do put another redstone module on here, like that, is I would like to use this as a sort of, um, so what I'm going to think of, as a store, to store one value. There are different ways of storing one value. And then we need to program this. So let's do that. Oh, that's not a redstone module. It's a bundle of redstone module. Sorry, that's the wrong one. I thought there was something odd. Didn't look quite right. It's got the little white bit in the middle, middle of it. Like that. And you'll notice that the block, this redstone signal is not transferred up here. In fact, it's actually flashing now. Why is it flashing? I'm not sure why it's flashing, to be honest with you. Maybe it's because it's not running fast enough. Let's turn it on. See if it still flashes. Okay, it's not flashing now. Maybe it was in, using the two faces to get the redstone signal from. It could be, couldn't it? Right. So it's night time. I'll be back in a second. Okay. Actually, before I'm, I'm missing out a step, I need to put an execution module on these, uh, some of these blocks here. So let's have a look at the recipe for the execution module. Uh, it's three gold. It's this particular case, it's got a gold ingot instead of having a, a redstone repeater or comparator or whatever. So we can put this on here. So, for example, I'd like to put an execution module on here and maybe on here. We'll do that later on. For the time being, I'm going to leave it like this. And then we're going to write, look at this program. The program's fairly simple. It might look difficult to start with, but it's fairly simple. So the first thing I'm going to do in this program is move the value zero upwards, which is done like this. Move the value of zero up and just done, click done on that. And then you can put this into here. So that, now it's running. And if you look at this carefully here, it says, it says move zero up. It's actually quite hard to see, isn't it? And I don't know whether we can actually do anything with that. So this one is getting set to the value of up. And that's the initialization phase of this particular thing. Now this program's going to have two states. The first state is going to be uh, idle. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to um, emulate uh, the redstone re repeater that I was using to do the conjuring uh, crafting to set up uh, to light the fire so we're going to then set, have a label idle so what we're going to do is we're going to have a move the right from the right hand side here to the accumulator this has accumulator and the backup of the accumulator this particular which just got two very it's got two um oh i've forgotten the word registers right and now I'm going to compare whether that value has changed. So what we look idle basically is when it's got no redstone signal. So we shall jump if the redstone signal in the accumulator is equal to zero, like that. And then we actually all we need to do is to jump to idle. Like that, and that's what you need to do. And what you're going to do is going to it's going to loop from here to here, and while this value is on the right hand side of this is actually zero. So let's have a look at this again. So at the moment we have actually got a, a figure in here, uh, and the figure is well actually it's it's jumping up and down. This one's not, actually not really jumping up and down. It's it's constant here. It's just this one's probably getting the signal from both sides here like this might not be what I want to do. Anyway, it's, it's, it's moving it up, so I'm using this as a, as a register. I could use a different module for doing that. Let's carry on here. Let's actually program this up. You won't actually see uh, any changes. Did that not change it? Let's have a look at the book again. Ha! Huh, it lost it. Why did I lose that? All right. I quickly, I quickly type this back in again, and I'll be back in a second. 
So I right click this again and now it's actually working. You can see here it's actually going through the, this program here. So it's comparing the right hand side, uh, putting it into the accumulator. And we know it's already uh, is not zero. In fact, that's strange. It should. I'm a bit puzzled as to why it's got that much choices to be done. Honest with you, it's going. Oh, it's actually exiting and moving back up to the top of the program. That's what the problem is. Okay, fine. So let's have a look at the next stage of this. So when it's not idle, it's got a register signal. We're going to move 15 up, um, which is the max, which is the maximum value of a register signal, a normal register signal that is, and so that. Let's just click done on that and then just program this in here. And then you'll see this should go up, as you can see here. Like that. But it's going down to zero again because of this, the, fir the first line of code in here. That's what's going on. OK. And then so that's going to then, then that we're, we're going to do is we're then going to jump to running. And running is the next state, which we'll put down here as a label. So now it's going to jump to running and then it's going to carry on. And when it finishes the program, it's going to come back up to the top again. OK, the so one bit when it's running, we shall move the right to the accumulator again because it's probably it's probably will have changed. In fact, it probably hasn't changed this particular time because the first time around it won't have changed. And what we're going to then do is we're going to jump if it's non zero to running. Uh, which is NZ non zero to running. So it's going to stay in the running state until it goes down again. Let's let's click this. I'm fine. I'll finish off the program. So if it is running, then we're going to jump to idle. Uh, no, if it suddenly becomes not, we're going to move zero up. Otherwise, we're going to jump to idle. We're not actually not doing anything at the moment. The jump command, this is an unconditional jump. So it's never going to come back up to the top here until the system gets restarted. So let's just do that. And then you can probably specify it, demonstrate it like this. So now it's going to come down through here and it's going to end up on the running state. And it's going to keep staying in running until until this value goes at the moment. You see, it's, it's still 15 in, it's still seven in here. It's not going to go down. Uh, and if we then increase the redstone signal by putting another lever on here like this, and now we've got a value of nine. As you can see, this redstone signal here has actually gone up. And you'll see it's staying on this particular piece here. So the next thing we can do is we can then remove these two signals. For example, it goes down to zero. And then it will start to jump. And this time it will jump up to the, up to the idle state again. And this then goes off, as you can see. So the next thing we're going to do is actually do something with this. Um, the way I'm going to do this is what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, does that stay stable this time? Yes, it does. It's not, it's not changing the value of this anymore. Let's put it back on again. And then it should probably, it's actually jumping between zero and seven. It's probably because of something else. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Maybe I have to put another program in here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put another redstone module on here. On this one, we're going to use this as the output. So what we're going to do with the output is we're going to simply say when this goes from uh, on to off, we're going to set a pulse. So let's just do that. Now, the way to do a pulse is like this. So we've moved zero up, which means we've actually told it to do uh, nothing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move uh, 15 to the left hand side. And then we're going to move zero to the left hand side. Because of the speed the program runs, it'll just make a little pulse, which we should be able to do, see. So now, so this has now got seven, as you can see, let's program it is you unfortunately you probably it's now bigger than the window here <laughs> as you can see it'll go down to the bottom here when we click the thing turn this off let's turn it off and then you can see it's going down the bottom here and it's moved zero up and it's sent out a pulse here like that very simple not too difficult is it what i was going to do is a little change this program i'm going to remove i'm going to put another execution module in here first of all 
I said I was going to do two. I'm going to actually split this program up a little bit like this. So I need another quill, a book and quill. I've got one already prepared. Oops, I've got one already prepared as it happens. And I'm pretty sure it's this one. No, it probably isn't actually. I'll check which one it is. Hold on a second. Okay, I've actually programmed this already. So what this is doing is going to move um, from below into the accumulator. And then it's going to jump to the end if that accumulator is zero, which is here. Otherwise, it's going to move zero down. And what we're going to do is we're going to put that program into here like this. And you see it's automatically running like this because it, and it's coming down here. So what I'm going to do with this program now is I'm going to change it. One, one small change in this program. I'm going to remove this um, line down, this line here where I'm moving zero to the left hand side. Just remove it. And then click done and then reprogram this like that. In fact, you don't see anything because these are actually two pages. So you've got to keep your programs really short. In fact, it's one page of a, of, a, of a book and that's it. And you can't see any more than that. So now let's let's put the signal on. See what happens. We're going down through here and it's going to jump to the running state, as you can see. Now it's running. It's just and it's just looping around this state of running and then until we turn it off. And you'll see this one is doing is just checking what's in the values down and then setting it just going basically to the end, which basically means going to the top. You could have actually written that differently. I could have written start at the top. Um, or I could even write jump minus one, I think is another way of doing it. Or J J R O minus one. So now we're going to turn this off and let's have a look at what happens. So this should send a pulse over here, and that should turn on. There you go. And as soon as that turns on, this program turned it off. Uh, and that's it. In fact, actually, that's all I want to have a look at today with TIS3D. I hope I've explained it reasonably well. But if we want this program to run faster, we'll just do it like this. And you can see it's now running faster. If I wanted to run even faster, let's get out to my backpack a couple. Oops, my keep pressing the wrong key. It's K instead of the bell. I'll just put a couple more. Um, levers i should have some levers in here i've moved things around a bit in my backpack so it's harder to see i've probably put another couple of levers on here for example that way that side here that side here and maybe i could put one here to make this go faster let's just do it here like that and then we can turn all of these on and you'll see it's moving much faster now like that it's actually got it's got four sides of redstone signals coming in so it's going to be a lot more reactive um in fact i think it's not working oh yes i'm sorry i can't put a lever on here <laughs> i put a lever on there that changes the signal okay so now let's just turn it on and now turn it off and you see the pulse was almost immediate and what this is going to do let's just break it up um because i've got everything programmed so i don't need to do anything else as I was going to replace this block, uh, you can simply, if you want to remove a block from here, you just need an empty hand and right click it, right click the, um, the faces like this. Okay, then you can simply quarry up all of the, all of the blocks uh, and do the same for the controller. I get the, I get the, I'm going to leave the rest of the redstone here. I don't need it. What we're going to do is we're going to put this down here and replace this redstone um, with this. So that's fairly straightforward to do. Unfortunately, it uses, it'll actually be faster because if we put it down here, we will get a signal coming out a lot earlier in the, in the process. So I'll do that and I'll be back in a second. So right, as you can see, this is now set up. So. What I could do, I just put it down to a single block and put the, instead of having two um, controllers beside each other, I've just got one casing, sorry, and I put at the back the controller. So for example, now if we turn this on and turn it off, we should see a redstone pulse coming out of the right hand side, like that, fantastic. So let's now connect, connect this back up again. I've got some redstone in my backpack here, so, or in this shulker box, right? Let's put this one down here. And I changed the program back to the original program that I wrote without the second one with a move down here like this. 
So, and that's programmed in here. So now when I flick this, you'll notice that this is currently not lit. And in fact, I've actually got a recipe prepared in here. I've got the um, conj superior conjuring, uh, I've forgotten which one to be honest, but let's have a look. You'll see that's turned it on like this as it went off. So this is now going to make, hopefully it's making something. It doesn't look like it is actually. Have I got the recipe wrong? <laughs> uh, it's this one. Stabilize conjuring focus. Oh, I've got the recipe wrong. Um, da, 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 da. What was the one I was using with nether? Let's have a look. I forgot which one. Let's have a look at the use of the nether star. Maybe I've got the wrong recipe in here. Oh, this is what I wanted to make. Soul slices. Yes, yeah, sorry. I'm conjuring essence. It takes 60 seconds. Nether star in the middle. Iron ingots. And... Actually, oh, it is working. Sorry. <laughs> Didn't notice. And you'll see that this is now, as you see, it's on. So as soon as this completes, which takes 60 seconds to complete, it will automatically turn off. Uh, how long is that going to take? I'm not sure yet. You can tell by the power. It's 14. So when it gets up to 15, it'll be almost finished. Then it should turn down that. And it should have sent down the pulse. And it didn't send down the pulse. Okay, maybe this program runs too fast. I don't know which. If it is running too fast, all I need to do is to remove this switch here. Come on, come back a bit. Because it should have it should have come along here. Put some more redstone down here like this. So it runs a little bit slower. And then put the lever back over here again and, and turn it on. And this time it's going to run a little bit slower. Uh, I'm not quite sure why it didn't do what it's supposed to do. That's a bit strange. Let's just turn it back on again. Like that. And you see, this time it did work. So I'll wait 60 seconds and we're back in a second. So any second it should finish off and send out a pulse. And it did this time. Good. Uh, the problem was I put this redstone model on, module on top of this and it was getting this redstone signal from the sides as well. So it was confusing it. In fact, I also slowed it down a, a, a lot. So the pulse was longer. And I also changed the program a little bit adding up a, another item in here, which is another operation, which is no op, which would just delay the, the pulse a little bit longer. Not much, but it would, uh, it actually doesn't do very much, the no op, it's just there for a filler as it were. Um, so there we are. So that's it for this episode. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Obviously using TIS 3D is probably a little bit more expensive than using a, a sticky piston and an observer block, but it's there for demonstration purpose. purposes. And so until next time, I wish you all the best. Bye for now. <laughs>